So everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I can't believe this is one of our, our webcasts and we're already in July, wrapping up July. Uh, my name's Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the application engineer managers with computer-aided technology. And what I would like to do is spend the next, oh, 30, 35 or so minutes talking about our SOLIDWORKS drawings and hopefully a few tips to give them a bit more uh, automation. So today's agenda, it's not, not super in-depth, not going uh, really, really long, really, really broad with our drawings. I'll start out with a little bit of background information, uh, mainly why am I talking about this particular subject matter? Why am I, I choosing to cover it? Uh, we'll then get into the meat and talk about our custom file properties and notes in our drawings and how we can link everything together and we can get it all to work uh, I guess I could say correctly, or maybe it's just simply to work. Uh, we'll then talk more about creating custom sheet formats, and you cannot talk about sheet formats without talking about custom drawing templates, and I'll get into more details um, in those parts of the presentation. Uh, and last but not least, even though I won't have a, a dedicated section for it, my goal with all of my presentations is just to share information, and hope, hopefully, excuse me, you pick up a couple tips along the way you know, something to, to help you out here. So let's talk a little bit about this background information. Why am I talking about drawings, sheet formats, notes, things like that today? Uh, first and foremost, out of all the topics and all the subject matter uh, that I hear about people using SOLIDWORKS, this is one of the most common questions that come up. Um, drawings, notes, sheet formats, templates, the various uh, permutations of getting those to work with one another. Um, I've presented on this form of topic many times in the past, uh, but I thought I would do it a little bit differently today and spend a little bit more time about some of the more trickier pieces of this process. You know, our SOLIDWORKS drawings, they offer a ton of automation, you know, extracting all the views from our models, placing our model dimensions in there, you know, dragging and dropping our projected views and section views and detail views, and the list goes on and on and on. But one of the things that I see happen still to this day, and I will admit that I fall into this trap, is a large amount of manual text entry, adding the same note to our title blocks and borders. Um, I've seen individuals define the material in their part and then type in the material on the title block and border, for example. So again, leveraging the automation, but we're still using these manual, just typing in notes and things like that techniques. The other reason I like to talk about that is to hopefully eliminate some of these strange behaviors. And, and I know all the SOLIDWORKS users on the screen here, if you've made a drawing and added a sheet, chances are very, very high you've seen this message before. So we'll, we'll look at how we can um, systematically go through things so this hopefully doesn't happen. If it does, maybe much, much less. And as I mentioned earlier, just to share some tips, you know, these are, these are not uh, functionalities that I've come up with, they're just solid standard uh, SOLIDWORKS functionalities, but sometimes they're not as easy to get to and easy to understand as some of the things we use every single day. So let's talk about these custom properties and these notes and how we can get them to work together. So when we start a new SOLIDWORKS drawing, and that's really what I'm going to focus on today, are brand new drawings, nothing really set up other than it's a drawing and it came installed with, uh, with SOLIDWORKS. Many notes already exist on our title blocks and borders, and they come in several different forms. Um, the code on the screen where you see PRP, PRP sheet, I don't expect you to commit that to memory. I'm just putting that up there because it is something we'll see as we move ahead. But we can see notes that could be linked to the current document, meaning notes linked to the drawing itself. So the drawing properties may be the drawing property description or the revision, for example. We can have notes that are referencing information from a part or an assembly model. We'll see that represented on screen by the code of PRP sheet. Uh, we can also individually attach notes to components within an assembly. So we can extract part information out of an, of an assembly um, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, the last one there, I have SOLIDWORKS dash dot, dot, dot. Those are very unique. Those are SOLIDWORKS special properties, things such as mass properties, the material section properties, 
uh, file locations, the date the file was created, things of that nature. Uh, we don't necessarily have a lot of control over that, but we can reference it. So all of these notes, a lot of them are already set up for our title blocks and borders already there for us. Uh, we can add our, our own, you know, insert annotation note, use that link to property icon, which we'll see here uh, very shortly. Um, but last but not least, because I'm, I'm throwing a ton of information out there, just search the SolidWorks help, either online or built inside of the SolidWorks application. If you go to your website, it's help solidworks.com or your web browser I should say and search for quotes there but don't put in the quotes link to property that'll take you exactly where all this information is located in the help as well as give you more content than I can put up on a single uh, single PowerPoint slide so when I like to go through this process and when I like to talk about this process this is a sample workflow that I like to use it is not the only way of doing it but it's a way that I found gives me the most repeatable results. In this case, I'll start with a brand new drawing. We'll go into that edit sheet format mode, which most SOLIDWORKS users are very familiar with, uh, modifying that title block and border or the sheet format in SOLIDWORKS terminology. We'll then start editing some of these default notes so we can understand uh, what these out of the box properties are, are or what the notes contain for those out of the box properties, I should say. We'll then define the appropriate properties so everything can then automatically update. Now, I'll pause here and mention that these custom properties, many users are familiar with them, and we can also leverage information from PDM. So if you happen to have a SOLIDWORKS PDM set up and you're entering information inside of your PDM data cards, well, that gets populated to your SOLIDWORKS file custom properties as well. Um, so we can have everything driven from that, that PDM side of things in many cases. Now, once we look at this workflow with the drawing, we'll check those updates. We'll see how everything works. We'll then switch over to a model, and we'll go through the same examples using a part model. Now, in the part model example, I have set up some custom properties beforehand for the sake of time. We'll then look at modifying them possibly, We'll add this part to a drawing, and then we'll define notes linked to these new properties that, that are not set up out of the box. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and take a look at this. Now, I will mention that I am using and showing SOLIDWORKS 2021, but everything is applicable to pretty much every single SOLIDWORKS version that I can think of, you know, 2020, 19, 18, and on and on and on. Um, the bulk of, or at least the idea of this presentation, I came up with it over 10 years ago, and it's the same technique. So you don't really need to worry about, I'm only showing you something in SOLIDWORKS 2021, for example. So let's get started. Let's start a brand new drawing. Just use a little hotkey here, Control N. We'll choose our default drawing template, and we'll open it up. We're all familiar with the sheet format. I like to use a B landscape. Shows nice and, uh, nice and large up on the screen. And now let's get into working with these notes. The first thing I like to do is turn on what are called annotation link variables. This will show us that text-based code that SOLIDWORKS is using. It'll help us understand what that file property actually is called. So we'll turn those on here. And now when we go into edit sheet format mode, we can start poking around and looking at some of these notes. So here we see right-click edit sheet format. And as soon as it pops up on the screen, you can see several notes in blue where we've got this dollar sign PRP sheet, and then in brackets, description, material, finish. Those are the annotation link variables. That's the notes telling us what they need in order to update. I've also paused my mouse right over a note that doesn't have any text at the moment. And if I double click on it, we can see PRP, dollar sign PRP, company name. So that dollar sign PRP is a local drawing property, and the name itself, company name, all one word. So this is just to show some of this already exists for us, and we're going to take advantage of it. Now, as we continue on, we've got a default property it's already set up for us named revision we could leverage. And in the column here where we've got drawn and the name and then date to the, to the right of it, we can see there's a, a drawn by property immediately to the right. We'll have drawn by date. 
checked by, checked by date, and so on and so forth. So these notes that I'm double clicking where they have the dollar sign PRP, those are current document or drawing properties. The material and the finish, those are model properties. Yes, it's a little bit confusing with the terminology, but the PRP sheet represents the model itself. So now that we know what this default drawing in this title block is looking for, let's see where we can get it to work for us. And that's where we'll begin to take a peek at our good old file properties. And that's what drives this entire process. So we'll take a look at the file properties and you can see out of the box, I have no properties, but I can simply choose whatever I would like right from the drop down list. I'll say company name and I'll just type in computer aided technology. These are simple text expressions. So anything is acceptable. And if I wanna change it, of course I can always do so. Some other options here, maybe the revision. And since this is you know, a silly example, um, I don't have PDM in this demonstration. We'll just type in revision Q. Uh, when we say OK, everything will update. And there we can see my notes are now populated. So yes, there is some text data entry. We cannot get around that, but we're driving it from one location so we can repeat this over and over and over. Now what I've done here is I've noticed that that note is a bit too wide. So when you double click on a note in SolidWorks on the formatting toolbar, there's a button named fit text. This allows us to compress a note or expand it horizontally without needing to worry about font size spacing or anything like that. So it makes it really easy to fit those notes in our title block borders or title block areas that may not, not fit perfectly every single time. So as you can see, those notes that exist, it's not super hard to do. It's just knowing exactly which button to push, which is true for a lot of things inside of SolidWorks. So we've looked at a simple example using the notes that exist for us in a drawing. Now let's switch over to a part model so we can get a little bit more creative with some of our property names and set up some brand new notes to reference those properties. So as we continue on here, I'll just go ahead and, and open up a SOLIDWORKS part model and I'll use my recent documents, just the letter R for recent documents. And here's my part up on the screen. And as I mentioned earlier, I've already created a number of properties for the sake of time. So I have a property here initially named model, just to show you, you can change it to something else. I'll flip it over to the description. I've got my part model name, or excuse me, company name of Megacorp. Um, but in this case, I wanna generate a brand new material property, but I don't wanna type that property in over and over and over. So in this case, I'm going to link it. And that's that little down arrow. This links it to one of those SolidWorks special properties. So I can go ahead and choose the material from the drop down list and we'll see some evaluated information material not specified. If a property does not exist, simply type in a new name. As long as it is a unique text string, SolidWorks allows you to put it in there. So I'm gonna de define a property called new property because I cannot think of anything more creative to add there. And the text expression, I'll just put in to be added. Uh, I'll also mention you do not have to fill in that text expression, you can leave it blank. Instead of leaving it blank though, I like to put little dash symbols in there just to let the user know, okay, you need to do something here. When we switch back over to the drawing, just a control tab operation here, I'm ready to begin to add that part model view in there. And you could do this whichever way you prefer. I like to use the good old model view command. You could use the view palette and drag and drop. You could drag from one window to another. But once the model is placed, we do need to do a quick rebuild. And when we do that, you'll notice my properties show up. I've got my title or my description of Superphone, my material not specified, my finish of a dash. And we can go in and start working with it a little bit more. So let's edit that sheet format. Let's make a few changes here. Let's move one note out of the way and let's add in a brand new note. And this is typically the workflow that we need to set up our title blocks in a more customized manner. So we go to the note and I'm gonna pause it here and I want everyone to focus on that little red square I put up on the screen. That is the link to property button. That is very, very easy to miss, but that's the key to make your notes 
reference your model property. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that and that'll bring up the link to property. And we'll pause here. Again, focus on that red square or red rectangle, I should say. We'll switch it over from the current document, the drawing, to the model found here, in this case, a single part. So once we click on that, we can go ahead and choose the property name. I'll choose company name here. Now, a question popped up and I'll, I'll address it at this moment. What about assemblies or parts and assemblies and things like that, where it says model view specified in sheet properties, you can hit that drop down list and there will be more options, component, assembly, things like that. So we'll choose the company name and say, okay. And now when I place the note, my company name derived from my part model is Megacorp. And I can place that wherever I would like and hide or remove a note I no longer would like to use. Now we do not need to create every single note from scratch. You can actually copy and paste your notes very easily inside of SolidWorks. And that's what we can do here. Just a control C for my existing material note, control V to paste it. And now I have two notes of the exact same property. But the nice thing about these properties is you can always change them. Just highlight the text and delete. We go back over to our link to property button. We go back to model found here. We then choose the new property. In this case, it's called new property from the list. Now, right below the mouse, you can see their SW dash file name, SW bomb part number, et cetera, et cetera. All those SW dashes, those are those SolidWorks special properties that I mentioned earlier. We really can't change them, but a lot of it is file information, storage information, things of that nature. So I'll choose my new property name. We'll say okay, and there you can see the text says to be added. I'll admit they're kind of silly examples with the text that I'm using, um, but I want it to be hopefully as, as straightforward as possible so you can see how this works. Now, once we switch back over to the part model, let's actually define a material. And we'll say this part's made out of 1060 alloy or what have you. And when we now take a look at our file properties, we can start working with them a little bit more. Because it's linked to that material, we can see that the material now shows the appropriate file property, and we could define a new property. We'll use the default name of weight, and we'll link this to the SolidWorks mass. So we'll leverage even more of those SolidWorks specialized properties. Once the mass is selected and we say okay, we can see the mass is 252.84 grams, switch back over to the drawing, zoom in, and everything updates. The mass in that weight field is updated appropriately, and my material now says 1060 alloy. So this workflow of editing properties, adding notes, switching to the part, switching back to the drawing, it is very much an iterative approach. It, it does require some kind of trial and error, some testing to make sure that everything works correctly. So now that we've done a handful of edits to our, our format, our sheet format, let's talk about taking it one step further and saving this, save everything that we've done so we can use it in the future. So I'm going to talk a little bit about custom sheet formats uh, and templates kind of interchangeable. We really can't do one without the other inside of SolidWorks. So when we create a SolidWorks drawing, when we say file new, and we pick that drawing icon, we're loading up a drawing template. When we choose our B-size landscape, we're then loading up a sheet format. I understand it may be confusing, but those two files, the template file and the sheet format file, they work together to generate our SolidWorks drawing. Now, with the sheet format, I'll start there. That controls the size, the border, the title block shape, we can add in our company logos to the sheet format. That's going to have our notes linked to the custom properties. We can even define custom properties on that sheet format if we would like and save them away so they're always ready for us. Um, our templates, those primarily store and load our document properties. The same is true for our part and assembly templates, um, although I'm only going to um, show an example of drawing templates here. 
Layers can be saved to our templates. We can set up multiple sheets. We can predefine our views. And last but not least at the bottom, that sheet format information, whether it's internal or it's, it's linked as a separate file. Now what you'll see today, I will actually have it as a linked file. So two separate files on my computer. Now, because they're files, they, they must be saved on the computer, on the server, what have you. Up on the screen, those are two default locations. Again, this is how out of the box SOLIDWORKS is set up. You've got program data, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS 20XX, replace XX with the version you're using. And if you're like me and you have multiple versions of SOLIDWORKS, you'll have multiple sets of these folders, 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll have a folder for your templates and then for sheet formats, it's gonna be buried even deeper, language slash English slash sheet format. Now, the unfortunate uh, thing about these folder locations is program data is hidden by default from Windows. So in order to find these on your C drive, you will need to go into your folder options and turn these on. Again, this is default out of the box. You may have redirected those to a network drive, maybe some other folder, or maybe your IT or system administrator uh, has done that for you. So can you relocate these? Absolutely. And in my opinion, relocate them. Um, I've put up a few bullet points there of, in my experience, the, the usual suspects, the ones that cause the most problems when we move from one version of SOLIDWORKS to another, your templates, your sheet formats, and then your file that controls your custom properties, your symbol library. If you ever lost your dimension symbol and it says mod-diam um, or your whole callouts don't work, Again, those are all individual files that are saved to these file locations. And those file locations are inside of that version specific folder. There will be one for 2020, one for 2021, 22, so on and so forth. So for my computer, I have a, a just an example or a sample up there, uh, SW underscore library. That's, I save everything in that static folder. I can install dozens of versions of SOLIDWORKS and everything references that one folder. I don't have to worry about things getting uh, things getting messed up, things getting lost from one release to another. So yes, all this information can be redefined in our SolidWorks file locations. So the steps that I like to take in working with and creating customized sheet formats. Again, start with a new drawing. I will preface that by saying you can also start from an existing drawing. So either one will work. Modify the sheet format, which we were just doing by adding in notes, add more notes, add logos, change the shape, delete text, add text, delete lines, add lines, really make any modification you need to make the title block in the border or sheet format file yours that works best for your company. And then the most important step of this process, in my opinion, again, it's just an opinion, everybody has different ones, but save that sheet format through file, save sheet format that will give you a discrete file on the computer. The nice thing about that is I can use that sheet format file and basically update a different drawing with it if I need to add a different logo or remove the logo or add text, remove text. Once you use separate sheet format files, they're easy to update. The downside, it's a separate file, just like an assembly and part references. Well, your drawing is now gonna reference this sheet format location. So you need to make sure that that name and that location doesn't change. That's where having a static location is helpful. Make note of that location. Like I said, if it's static, you're probably good to go at that point. And like everything, test. Um, you wanna make sure that things behave, your drawings, your templates, your sheet formats, your notes, they behave the way that you expect them to behave. Almost like the design intent for a part model, make sure it changes or it behaves the way we expect when we make a dimensional change. That holds true. This is the design intent for your sheet formats. Make sure it behaves the way it should when we make our changes. So let's take a look at this and I'm gonna use my existing drawing that I've been working with thus far. So we'll go in and we'll just make a few minor edits. The first thing I wanna do is edit the sheet format and we're going to add uh, a bit of information 
but let's get rid of this proprietary and confidential because I'm sharing it with everybody on the internet. It's definitely not proprietary. And let's remove this particular note. We'll just delete it. And I would like to replace it with our company logo. So we'll use the insert picture. And this is the sketch picture command. You may have used this over on the part modeling side of things, but we'll choose sketch picture, browse for the logo, and we'll go ahead and insert it. Drag it and drop it wherever we would like it, resize it accordingly. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time, you know, making my logo look perfect. I'll just eyeball it and get it close. Uh, but at this point, I now have a nice graphical image of the company logo in there. The other thing you may want to do, and I will admit I forget to do this from time to time, and that is to clear out your file properties. So I have some, some test properties in there of Q and my name and an example date. I'm just going to replace those with my dashes that I like to use. That way I'm not accidentally saving incorrect properties in my title block and border or in my sheet format, I should say. When I'm satisfied with the changes, we'll switch back into edit sheet mode. And even though it's not necessary, I like to delete any parts. So uh, we'll delete that view, rebuild the drawing to clear out all the properties, and we'll go file, save sheet format. So this will extract the changes from on screen and save them out to a sheet format file. Make note of the location. I'm going to save it to the default location on my computer, so buried in my program data file, and I'll give it a name. So B landscape dash custom. If I'm satisfied with that, of course, we can go ahead and save it. And that's really all there is to it. Now for the important step, close what I'm working on and start over and test this process. So I'll start the new drawing, just the generic one out of the box. And then we will browse and there's my B landscape custom that was just saved, that was just created. We simply select it, open, and we'll load that sheet format data into my current drawing. Now I'm satisfied with how everything works, just a visual uh, check, my name, my date, my revision, their, their little dashes, the logo is still there, nothing has changed unexpectedly. So I'm fairly confident that everything is working the way that I expect it to work. Of course, this step might take a couple of iterations to iron out you know, any issues that arise, but at this point, I'm looking pretty good right there. So once we're satisfied with our sheet format file and we've saved it onto the computer, onto the location, the last piece of this puzzle to basically link it all together. So all I need to do is just pick a new file to start a drawing is to create a custom drawing template. And that's actually quite easy to do. We're, we've, we've already done it. We just need to save it. So again, kind of starting over, start with that new drawing, which you'll see me do here. I'll start from complete scratch, select that customized sheet format, the same one that we saved moments ago. Modify the document properties, so set your units, your image quality, any, any settings under document properties that's specific and necessary for your company, and then save that new template. Last but not least, we close those files, and I bet you all know the last bullet point I have up on the slide is to test those changes. So just like everything, we want to make sure it does what we think it should do. But if we take this slow, systematic report, uh, approach to it, it's going to do what you think it should do. It's going to behave um, as it should. So back into SolidWorks, we're starting over here. So we'll go back to File New. We'll select the generic drawing. Again, that drawing template right there, that's what we get when we install SolidWorks. Nothing's customized yet. We will browse to my customized sheet format. That's the one that we saved with the logo and the few notes in there. And just like we saw moments ago, it should look just fine. But now let's start looking at our, our tools options and our document properties. And I like to use the options uh, gear icon. And we'll jump over to the document properties. And here is where I will say change everything you need to. I'm only going to change a couple, you know, those standout options that are easy to understand. I'll change the units. But if you find yourself making the same document property change every single time you start 
a drawing and assembly or a part, that's a perfect candidate, a perfect situation for making those changes and saving a custom template. So let's go ahead and set the units up. I'll just flip it over to, uh, let's say custom, and I'll say inches of three decimal points and maybe uh, millimeters of two decimal points if I wanna use dual dimensions on my drawing. Another thing I'll change since I have ridiculously low image quality, uh, let's increase it because I want my circles to actually look like circles. But I will say, be careful with the image quality sliders. You can go too high and it will cause performance issues. We've all seen it where the graphics get slow. If we take a look at the file properties, those came over from my custom sheet format. That all looks good. So I think at this point, I'm ready to save a brand new template. So file, save as, and then we choose the save as type. And I will recommend save as type first. Don't, uh, do not navigate to the folder location because once I choose drawing templates, SolidWorks is gonna go to the location set in my file locations and my system options. So you may find yourself changing it more than once. Uh, looks like I made a mistake there. Typical, uh, typical misspellings on my part. So I'll fix that. So now we'll call it B landscape inch. And this will be my custom drawing template, a DRW DOT. If I was working in a part, I would choose a part template in this example or an assembly. I would choose the assembly template file format, but it all works the same. Once we save, nothing really changes. Close it down, start over, test what we've done. Now, when I choose new templates, there's the file I just saved, my custom B landscape inch. We'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, to open it up, everything looks good. Nothing I'll say weird is happening. My file properties, they're just ready for me to use them. And if we take a look at the sheet properties, we can see that it is referencing. So this is that link that I've established. It is referencing my B landscape custom. At this point, I'm fairly confident that everything is going to work as I expect it to work. But again, run it through a couple more tests, make some changes, add some notes, add some properties share it with some power users, maybe before you distribute it to the entire company to make sure it works. But for a presentation example, I'm pretty satisfied that, that everything is going to work as expected. So as I mentioned at the beginning, just a couple of topics that I wanted to cover in about 35 minutes or so. Uh, we looked, looked at those custom properties that our drawings have by default the corresponding notes, how to make everything work together. We then went through a, a quick scenario of how to leverage those changes, save a custom sheet format, and then wrapping up with using that sheet format to help us build our custom drawing template. So everyone, thank you so much for your attendance again. I hope you have a, have a great day. And uh, for everyone, again, hope to see you in a future webcast. Take care out there. And uh, have a great rest of your day and a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much.